ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ನಮಸ್ಕಾರ ಐ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಒನ್ ಟು ದಿಸ್ ಲೆಕ್ಚರ್ ಡೆಮಾನ್ಸ್ಟ್ರೇಷನ್ ಆನ್ ಬರ್ನಮ್ ಇನ್ ಭರತನಾಟ್ಯಂ ಮೈ ಸ್ಪೆಷಲ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ಸ್ ಟು ದ ಇಂಡಿಯನ್ ಕ್ಲಾಸಿಕಲ್ ಡಾನ್ಸರ್ಸ್ ಅಸೋಸಿಯೇಷನ್ that has now been hosted by Antara Center for Performing Arts for this session. Before I start my lecture demonstration, I would like to express my gratitude to the coordinator, Shri Gopakumar, for facilitating this process and giving me this topic of Varnam to be done as a lecture demonstration. Assisting me is Shreemati Athena Madhu, my sister-in-law, and my son on the vocal, Shri Vishwajit Vinod Kumar. Technical support by Shri Madhu Vishwanathan, my brother, and my student, Kumari Lokeshwari. Varnam. the central piece of a bharatanatyam repertoire this varnam is an important and integral part of every performance that a person takes on in the medium of bharatanatyam varnam the root word itself has got several meanings varnam means color so the dancer can explore the various shades and interpretations of the line sometimes phrase or even a word varnam can also mean varnane as told in tamil so it is a description of something done in an elaborate way varnam also means letter in every language you have the varnamala composed of the swaras and in in this varnam itself in the bharatanatyam compositions it is made up of the swaras it has the jatis it has an adequate proportion of abhinaya so it is a harmonious blend of nritta and abhinaya where did this varnam first start in our repertoire the mention of this word varnam is seen in someshwara's text manasolasa way back in the 12th century and it says that varnam has been a musical composition that has been rendered in that time the sangeeta ratnakara of charangadeva also mentions the varna prabandha and varna swaras we have different types of varnams today ranging from taana varnam pada varnam chauka kala varnam daru varnam stava varnam but the most important and most popular varnam is the pada varnam that is handled by the bharatanatyam dancers in particular the varnam started first as a prabandha and later on it was known as a varnam as late as the 18th century so when the tanjore quartet framed the margam it took on the central place of the entire repertoire in a musical kacheri the varnam is always right at the beginning which is usually a warm up exercise for the vocalist for the rest of the evening but the pada varnam is not that at all the pada varnam takes the central place and it is the most elaborate and the most time consuming of all the compositions done in the repertoire if you look at the structure of a varnam we can also see the differences between generally a taana varnam and a pada varnam taana varnam of course is used in the musical repertoire and it gives more importance to the raga bhava ranjaka prayogas and all the melodic aspects with very few words 
but in a padavarnam you have a lot more words and the sahitya or the lyrics is given utmost importance and here you also see an important feature of delineating an idea an emotional state or the mood of a nayaka or a nayika usually padavarnams have the theme of shringara or devotion which is bhakti but when you look at the two components of nritta as well as abhinaya the nritta aspect is seen in the jatis and the swaras whereas the abhinaya is seen in all the lines that are extolled in great detail in every varnam it starts with a trikala jati after the line is first line is sung the trikala jati is a very important and integral part of the varnam trikalam vilambam madhyamam and duritam meaning the first speed the middle speed and the fast tempo are all done by the dancer finishing off with a korep ending in a tirmanam these are technicalities of the structure of a jati which is an important part of the varnam the dancer then goes on to delineate the various lines broadly the varnam is divided into two halves the purvangam and the uttarangam the purvangam consists of pallavi anupallavi and chitta swaram usually the pallavi is an opening line to suggest the kind of ambience in which the nayika is talking to her patron her lord her swami or it could be the nayaka too the second is the anupallavi which really tells you a lot of detail about who is speaking to whom the chitta swaram is the in the middle and it is the center and it consists of both the swara passages with its corresponding sahitya in tanavarnams sometimes you don't have these sahityas and it is sung in two speeds but in padavarnams usually we do not have the practice of singing in two speeds purvangam is completed like this when you look at uttarangam in a padavarnam it usually starts with a ettukada pallavi which is a line or a song which has a meaningful statement made by the dancer this is followed by swaras with the corresponding lyrics there are usually 3 to 4 swaras and sometimes the last swara does not have sahitya or lyrics in some schools which is a tradition that is followed even today even if there are lyrics in the last swaram it is not performed and the very last line there is what is known as an anubandha in traditional compositions of padavarnams where that last line links to the first part of the pallavi this is a very important aspect of the traditional types of varnams which is not done nowadays in contemporary padavarnams for the sake of a lecture demonstration i wanted to structure it in a way that each part of the varnam is highlighted with examples of different padavarnams so today we will start the pallavi with a very very celebrated padavarnam which started off incidentally as a tanavarnam it was composed by muttu swami dikshitar in the ragam todi it was done in kalakshetra and it was there that tiger varadachari penned the lyrics for the second half and it is now done as a padavarnam so we will see the pallavi of this padavarnam that speaks of a beautiful idea of tyagaraja of tiruvarur the beauty of his form is described by the nayika roopamu juchi having seen your beautiful form i am enamored and i have come to you this beautiful form from head to toe i behold in front of me 
O Tyagesha, who is holding the axe and the deer in his hand, won't you give me a glimpse of your beautiful form? I know a long time ago, Brahma was unable to see where this tall tower of fire that you had transformed into began. He flew high as the Hamsa but could not see it. While Vishnu transformed into a boar and dug deep to see where it all ended. And yet he could not see it. That kind of a form you behold. Can I see that form, O Tyagaraja? So you can see how the dancer will start with a simple straightforward idea which is padartha or word to word meaning and then move on to vakyartha which is the entire sentence meaning and then go on to the third aspect of doing a sanchari which is a small delineation or an elaboration of the existing phrase. So we will see the first example. Rupamajuchi in Ragam Todi said to Adi Talam for the Pallavi line, beginning with the Trikala Jati and going to the Pallavi. Chitini Ru 
You would have seen how the dancer is able to interpret from the word to word meaning to a sentence meaning and then move on to the sanchari. Sancharam literally means to meander, to wander. But it does not wander without any meaning. It is most relevant to a particular word a phrase or even the entire import of that particular sentence. Here you have different types of sancharis. You could take the word Krishna and call him Murahara. You could say Govardhana Giridhara. You could say Navanita Krishna. Kalinga Mardana. So different names are itself a way of describing or elaborating upon a word. The same thing if you have to describe a person from head to toe, right from the peacock feather to the lotus like feet, seeing the Vanamala around his neck, the Pitambaram and the Venu in his hand. All these description is about a single person. That is another type of a Sanchara. The third and the most popularly done Sanchara is an episode related to a name, the word or a phrase. Here it was Tyagaraja, but we are looking at the aspect of Shiva who has turned into a tower of fire that has no beginning nor end. So this idea is seen in an episode. Sanchari can also have a new dimension when a dancer gets creative. And that is what I would like to show in the next example, another Pallavi line of a very celebrated Padavarnam of Punnayapillai, Mohamana Yen Nidil in Ragam Bhairavi. Here the Naika is a love-blown Naika in love with Sri Brahadishwara and she speaks about her love that she is not able to control and that passion is increasing day by day that she feels that everything that she looks at reminds her of him. She daydreams and then realizes that it is only a figment of her imagination. Mohamana Yen Nidil. I will just show you the Pallavi line to explain how Sanchari is done. Mo Yeah. 
Padavarnams, I now want to move on to the Anupallavi. The example I would like to show here is from a celebrated Varnam by the late Srimati Lalita, the founder of Sri Saraswati Gana Nilayam. This Padavarnam is in Ragam Khamas, a beautiful Ragam for delineation and elaboration and it's a musician's delight to sing in Khamas. This particular Padavarnam speaks of, excuse me, This particular Padavarnam speaks about Muruga who is the Nayaka and this girl who is in love with Muruga is now describing who he is. is. He is the son of Shiva and how was he born? He came from the third eye of Shiva that fell down as a spark and turned into six lotuses with six beautiful babies. The Kartika maidens descended and nursed them like their own. And at that time, Parvati, hearing this, rushed to take them all in her fold. And when she did that, all the heads remained as six, while the body fused into one. And that's why he was known as Shanmuka. Kailai Nadanin Selva Maganei Kana, meaning, in order to see the dear boy of mighty Shiva, who is the lord of the Kailasha mountains, is it enough if I have even one crow eyes? Kangal Kodi Podumo. So, this is the line I would like to delineate. But since Varnam gives equal importance to both Nritta and Abhinaya, it will be preceded by a Jati.
Usually in Padavarnams, you have two lines of the Pallavi and two lines of the Anupallavi. So we are going to see yet another episode from another line of an Anupallavi by Nati Chakravarti, Nati Acharya, K. N. Dandai Dupani Pillai's composition in Ragam Todi, Adi Sivanai Kanave. This 
speaks of a very important episode that is often done by most dancers in describing Shiva. He is often seen wearing the tiger skin, serpents for ornaments and even the elephant's hide for a cloak. Standing on Apasmara, he stands in Ananda Tandavam. This motif with all his attributes comes from a very specific story. Going back to the Darukavanam, when the rishis there were very arrogant and they thought no end of their greatness, that they even thought that they were greater than Shiva. In order to test them and to teach them a lesson, he comes down as Digambara Murti and this enrages the rishis who make a big yagam and out of which all the negative energies emerge. The tiger that emerges is torn and worn as his dress. The elephant is wrapped as his cloak. The snakes that hissed out of the yagam is turned into beautiful ornaments for Shiva. This episode of Daruka Vanam is delineated and spoken by Lord Vishnu who happened to witness it. And Adi Sesha, who is the bed for Vishnu, in his avatara as Patanjali, longed to see this glimpse of this beautiful form. So he along with Vyagrapada requested him to come to Tillai, Chidambaram and show this beautiful dance, Ananda Tandava. So this episode is seen as a Sanchari in the Anupallavi. We have spoken about Pallavi and Anupallavi. Now the middle section is called Chittaswaram or Muktaiswaram. For this I have chosen 
మనవి చేకొనరా ద పదవరణం బై ద టాంజోర్ క్వాటెట్ ఇన్ రాగం శంకరాభరణం అగైన్ ఇట్ ఈస్ ఇన్ శృంగార భావం అండ్ హియర్ షీ స్పీక్స్ ఆఫ్ హర్ ఇంటెన్సిటీ ఆఫ్ లవ్ బట్ ఇన్ దిస్ సెక్షన్ ఐ వుడ్ లైక్ టు షో ద చిట్టస్వరం and the corresponding sahityam that talks about his majesty and how her state of mind as she is separated from him is like being drowned in the ocean of weariness being separated and her mind is like a ship without a rudder so this is the state of her emotional her this is her emotional state so we can see the chittaswaram followed by the sahityam nindu ne ra of the padavarnam is completed and now we move to the uttarangam starting usually with the yettukada pallavi yettukada pallavi is normally the sahitya or the lyric but in some padavarnam and the particularly in this one that is sometimes also called as varajati is now being shown as an example this is yet another 
composition of the Tanjore Quartet in Ragam Anand Bhairavi set to Adi Thalam. And here the Ethikada Pallavi, the Swaras are, it lends itself so beautifully to the structure of several core ways. So much so that it is like a mini Tillana in the middle of a Varnam. So you can see how I'm just going to show that to explain how much predominance was given to Nritta while not leaving enough scope for Abhinaya. Both were on the same platter. So I'm going to show the Yetthukada Pallavi which is rare. Usually it is a Yetthukada Swara in a Tanavarnam or a Daru or a Swarajati. But in this Padavarnam it is the Yetthukada Pallavi which is a Swaram and not a Sahityam that it begins with. So this is giving the structure of a Tillana but within the format of a Padavarnam. Pa pa ma ga ga ma pa ma ma ga li ga ma ga ga li sa ni ni sa sa ni ga ga li ga ma ga ma pa pa ma ga ga ma pa ma ma ga li ga ma ga ga li sa ni ni sa sa ni Pa ma ga ga ma, pa ma ma 
As I explained, this Yetukada Pallavi, which has a swara instead of sahitya, is an unusual one. And that is one of the reasons why this Padavarnam is also called Swarajati. Because it resembles a Swarajati in that aspect. Moving on to the second half, after the Yetukada Pallavi, normally there are three to four swaras with the corresponding Sahityas. Here the Sahityam is not elaborately done like the first half of the Padavarnam. Also, the Swarams and the Sahityam are relatively in a higher tempo than the first half of the Varnam. In a Tana Varnam of a musical format, they normally adopt exactly the second speed but this is not done in the Padavarnams done by Bharatanatyam dancers. Usually they are done a little faster in tempo so that every nuance is brought out and enhanced and the clarity of footwork is not compromised. In the Swara patterns, I have chosen a very beautiful Padavarnam of the late Turayu Rajagopala Sharma in Ragam Athana that speaks of little Krishna. Chinni Krishna Rara Nannu Palimpa In order to protect me, won't you come, O oh little Krishna? What is interesting is the way my teacher, the Dhananjayans, have choreographed it to suit the flow of the idea in the Sahityam, the Swara itself is enacted leading on to the Sahitya. The first and the third Swara has been chosen to highlight this point. The first being Krishna looking for butter in the house of the Gopika, stealing it and running away. The next Swara that I would like to de describe is the famous Kalinga Nartana where Krishna dives into the Kalindi and goes and fights Kaliya and dances on his hood, lifts the mount Govardhana, plays the Rasalila with the Gopikas, much to the delight of everyone there. So these two Swarams, you will see how the Swarams are itself enacted instead of being structured coreways. Chinni Krishna Rara Nanu <laughs> 
I had mentioned that the concluding swaram is sometimes without a sahityam. So we are going to return to a padavarnam that I had started in the chitta swaram. Manavi Chekunara. Here the last swaram is done without the sahityam. And this is one other aspect in the last swaram where usually there is a line or a phrase that is repeated again and again because it gives the scope for the dancer to do several rhythmic varieties as footwork. Here you will find this phrase pa 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 da 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 ni 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 sa 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 re 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 ga ga sa re sa ni da That line will be done but because it is a lecture demonstration can we do it just four times? Okay. So I will conclude this Padavarnam lecture demonstration with the last swaram of this Shankarabharanam Padavarnam, Manaviche Kunara. Mm.
there is one feature of the nritta section that is very important as a concluding part of a jati or tattimittu we have various aridis ta ke ta diditai 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 or the famous in this padavarnam it starts from here so so various or different aridis according to the musical structure and of course the skill and artistry of the dancer to do it either in half avartanam or at the end of one full avartanam coming back to samam these aridis are also beautiful punctuating marks in the padavarnam and this is seen in different ways along with the tatti metas which are done in different nadais one can go on and on about the different aspects in a padavarnam but i am very thankful that i was given the space to share these thoughts with all of you and if there are any questions i am willing to take it and if i can answer them i will do so once again i thank indian classical dancers association for this wonderful space that has been created for us to share our thoughts and ideas thank you namaskaram